Love that last one. Good morning, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be with you. The last few weeks, I've been in awe of all of you who have spoken with such grace, openness, and ease, sharing about yourself, your experiences, religion, and hopes for the school year. There is an incredible sense of community here at Brooks, but particularly here in the chapel, and I'm honored to be invited to include my voice to the many who came before me and have spoken their truths for close to a century. For days, I contemplated funny, self-deprecating ways to open my chapel talk in order to make it memorable, but I've landed on good old storytelling as a way to introduce myself to you all. Some of you may have noticed I have a rather bold and large tattoo on my gigantic and muscular bicep. <laughs> you may have also seen the same symbol on my laptop, a gift from Reverend Afori after she recognized my tattoo. It is an Adinkra symbol called Dwenemin, which means ram's horns, and it symbolizes humility and strength. Adinkra symbols were designed by the Akan people from the Ivory Coast and Ghana back in the 1800s. As an African American, I'm unable to locate my exact origins and follow my family tree back to the beginning because my ancestors' identities and histories were intentionally erased during the Middle Passage and enslavement. And for that reason, my maiden name is Freeman, which is a name my relatives chose after emancipation to reclaim their freedom and humanity. Free man. Although I have no direct familial ties to Ghana that I'm aware of, my grandfather moved there decades ago to start the first life insurance company in the 50s and 60s. As a result, my father spent a good deal of his childhood in Ghana, and therefore I grew up with Adinkra symbols, stools, West African artwork and sculptures and other masterpieces in my childhood home in Massachusetts. When it came time to make that very important decision of picking a tattoo, I chose something that felt historically a part of me. This one spoke the loudest. The symbol means that even the strong have to be humble. And at first, the meaning might seem contradictory. According to the Oxford Dictionary, humble is defined as having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. So how can someone be humble and strong? As most things in life, we are complicated beings and cannot be categorized by single boxes and definitions. We are intricate and yet seek balance, very much like the yin-yang Chinese philosophical, ph philosophical concept that opposite forces are interconnected. You cannot have one without the other. And this doesn't mean I don't believe in my value, but that rather I see and I aspire to see how it exists and connects in a larger context and with connection with others. There's something within the balance of humility and strength that allows us to grow, evolve, take risks, and remain optimistic about what is coming next. These values have become my guiding life principles that have helped me navigate the ups and downs that I have come my way. All right, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to do a little bit of storytelling. But I always remember my PE teacher, Mr. Snotty. And I mean it, that was really his name. He would tell us that when we went to middle school and high school and beyond, we would always encounter people, people who were faster, stronger, and smarter than us. So I remember nervously laughing at this because what kind of pep talk was this to a bunch of young kids raised on Mr. Rogers' message that we were all special? But he was right, though. He wasn't cutting us down by reminding, but reminding us to be humble. It actually released some of the pressure we had been feeling in school. It was a reminder that those around us have as much, if not more, to offer than we may even realize. When we attempt to take out our own ego, the opportunities to learn and grow are endless. He still taught us to be our best versions of ourselves, but also how to remember that there are people of all talents around us, and they in turn push us to be stronger and unleash the extraordinary. If we put our forces together, imagine what we could accomplish. Mr. Snotty also sorry, taught us how to laugh at ourselves. 
He reminded us that things aren't always that serious, and it's okay to make self-deprecating jokes once in a while. It eases the tension before anyone else can say anything that could potentially be harmful. So for example, let's say you've got that big zit on your forehead and it's about to erupt. If you make a joke before anybody else, they, no one else can hurt you with their comments because you've already acknowledged it. Mr. Snotty was brilliant. Now back to my tattoo. To truly inhabit the spirit of it, I think on my journeys as an actor and athlete. To many people, these identities also seem contradictory and often students have to decide between the two. But my experiences in both have supported me so much in my personal and professional careers. I spent three years attending conservatory classes and acting for graduate school. It was literally the hardest educational experience of my life because it was personal. In acting, you must show vulnerability. And in our training, we tore down, we were torn down and rebuilt to launch ourselves into one of the most harsh professions. Talk about humbling. I don't have enough time today to share with you the stories and adventures of my brief career in acting, but I will tell you that a performance cannot go on with just one person. Okay, well, unless it's a one-person show, but you know what I'm saying, right? Okay, and even then, actually, there is an ensemble of people working together to put on that production. We often think of the lead actor as being the most significant, but that simply isn't the case. Without lighting, sound, direction, set designs, hair and makeup, costume, the list goes on, there would be no show. See what I mean? I was humbled by my acting career through the ups and downs of it all. It takes strength to walk into an audition room and repeatedly put yourself out there when the majority of the time you hear, mm -hmm, thank you. <laughs> being humble means accepting sometimes a cruel reality, but being strong enough to push through or realizing it might be the moment to walk off stage for the final time. When it came to sports and athletics for me, I probably leaned on my strength more than my humility, but they still went hand in hand. Rowing is one of the most beautiful sports, in my opinion. You are not just one person. Well, actually, if you're in a single, then you are one person, but you know what I'm going, because we've done this before. You get my point. Rowing in, and in sports in general taught me how hard I can push myself and realize what is in my control. Because of this, I can shut out the unnecessary chatter that is out of my control and focus on what matters most. I know my warrior strength and spirit comes from the time as an athlete and from working with such strong and remarkable women. It's cliche, but because of them, I genuinely believe that I'm able to accomplish my goals when I truly put my mind and body into it. I will leave you with this acknowledgement. I know I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I'm smart with whom I surround myself. I see the strength and potential and beauty in people, and that return, in return, is humbling. There is so much to celebrate together in partnership. And when I look at each of you, I know that there is an infinite potential and talent here. Some of it has yet to be discovered, but I hope that you take these stories as a motivation to lift one another and grow. Be that walking contradiction of humility and strength and welcome the possibilities within and around you. Thank you. <laughs>